There's a reason why there are so many algorithmic trading models that are using Python as the language of choice. It's great for researchers to take it and fiddle with it and mess with it, and then an actual software engineer can take it and productionize it and make it actually do what it's supposed to really do. Which is why it came as a surprise to me that the smart contract world wasn't on the Python train. You look at all these smart contract development platforms, and they're all using JavaScript. Huh, okay, JavaScript error. Delete node modules, try again. So like, what's wrong? Nope, it's broken, I don't know why. Can you tell me where the error even is? Nope, it's broken. Any recommendations of what I can do? F you. That's the error, just change this. Here's a million links on how to actually fix it. This is why I was so excited to learn about Brownie, which is a Python framework for deploying smart contracts. So Web3.py is a really powerful tool that you can use to deploy smart contracts. Brownie is a framework on top of Web3.py that makes it easier to track and maintain and test these contracts. You're absolutely more than welcome to use just Web3.py to deploy your smart contracts. And in fact, at the end of this video, I'll even show you a demo of us using web3.py, but for most products that you want to go somewhere, you're gonna to wanna to use Brownie, you're gonna to wanna to use some type of testing framework. Again, for you fintechers, for you algo traders, your nut finance uses this thing. Hmm, your nut finance. Oh, just this protocol that has, you know, almost half a billion dollars in it. You know, no big deal. Let's deploy a smart contract with Python. Now to get this started, we actually need to install Brownie. So we're gonna do pip install f Brownie. Now, even though I know we said we hate JavaScript, we do need NPM to install Ganache because Brownie depends heavily on Ganache and be able to run your own local blockchain. This is the only time we're gonna have to deal with anything JavaScript-y. So we're just gonna do NPM install uh, dash G Ganache CLI. Uh, I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again. Now we can run a Ganache chain locally. This is a local Ethereum chain, and this is what we're gonna be using for all our testing, and, and we can deploy to a local chain. Now, another thing that's so awesome about Brownie is it has these things called mixes. If you're familiar with Truffle, Truffle has something called Truffle Boxes. Brownie has Brownie mixes, and what we can do is we can use one of these Brownie mixes to get started with some boilerplate code. We can see here we have a Chainlink mix, we have a Yearn Strategy mix, GitHub Actions, React, pretty much everything that you're really gonna wanna know. Ave, oh my God, look at these brownies. I mean, brownie mixes. Doctor told me I have high cholesterol. So we're gonna go ahead and bake our Chainlink mix. It's so clever. Brownie bake Chainlink mix. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna add all this code to a repo here. And we see we now have a Chainlink repo. We do CD Chainlink. And boom, everything in here is what we're looking for. This is all the boilerplate code we need to deploy our smart contract. Build is where Brownie stores a lot of information about how your project in general is going. It stores contract information, it stores ABIs, We'll talk about that in a little bit. Contracts, this is where you're going to write your actual smart contract. So we see here, we have some boilerplate chain link contracts, but you can use Solidity and Viper. So if you wanna check out Viper, you absolutely can. It's another programming language. Interfaces, interfaces are a really easy, really good way of interacting with smart contracts on chain because they can get compiled down to the ABI. And remember, the two things we need to interact with every contract on chain is an address and an ABI, and an interface is a way of getting that ABI. Reports is where you can store information about reports, maybe the results of a script, for example, which leads us into scripts. Scripts is going to be where you're going to put your deployment scripts, where you're going to put your interacting scripts and, and anything really that you want to do. So in this chain link mix, we have three different types of scripts, API scripts, price feed scripts, and VRF scripts. Obviously, each one of them shows how to work with the different elements of chain link. And if you're unfamiliar with chain link, don't worry about it. We'll get there in a second. So price feeds allows us to deploy a smart contract. This is how small the script is and you can do regular Python to deploy stuff. Tests are obviously where our tests are gonna be. Brownie config, this is a really important one. This is going to define pretty much all the configuration variables of our project here. One of the nice pieces too is based off of the network you're working with, you can specify certain addresses. So always make an awesome readme. And remember, all the information for this is also available in the readme of this repo and in the readme of all the Brownie mixes. So if you get confused, you get lost, go ahead and jump on there. So to work with this, we need two environment variables. We need a Web3 Infura project ID, and we need a private key. If you're not familiar with environment variables, there is a link in the readme that will teach you more. You can get an Infura project ID by going to Infura, signing for a free key is export private key equals, and this is where you're gonna get your private key. If you have MetaMask, for example, you can go, well, you can sign in, you can go to settings and you can find export private key. And that's what you're gonna use here. I already have them set up, so I'm not gonna go ahead and export them. If you've never worked with MetaMask, if you've never worked with test nets, there's a link in the description to a video which will teach you how to do that. If we want to just run our one of our contracts, we can use this Brownie run here. So we're actually going to use this script 
to deploy a smart contract. Brownie is really magical in the fact that you can just import your contracts via from Brownie import price feed. So if we go to our contracts, we have this contract called price feed. So we get to import it into our Python package with just from Brownie import price feed. Accounts and network are also Brownie exclusive terms. Accounts stand for the accounts associated with your private key. If you set that private key environment variable, and the network is going to be the network that we're on. Whenever we run a Brownie command, so, so for example, Brownie run, you know, script, whatever, we can also pass this network flag, like network coven, to work on the coven testnet. These networks are actually defined in this Brownie config file. So accounts comes from your wallet, network comes from what you specify. And if you don't specify something, obviously it will use the default. So we have our main function. This is what's getting called when Brownie actually runs. And what we're doing is we're just checking the network. So if the network that show active is mainnet fork, or it's a development network, we're going to deploy price feed, um, deploy this price feed contract using this mainnet Ethereum address. And again, if we look at our, our price feed contract, the constructor, whenever we create a new contract, we need to pass an aggregator address. And this is a contract that can read the prices off of Chainlink feeds. If you're unfamiliar with Chainlink feeds, get over to feeds.chain.link, head over to the documentation. This is a way to get a decentralized definitive proof about what the price of an asset is. For example, Ethereum, right now it's about $600. In order to get this price, we need to pass it an address. So for example, ETHUSD. You also have to pass this object uh, called from accounts zero. Brownie will know that you're working on a local chain and it'll use kind of the built-in accounts of that local chain. Now I also have, if the network is Coven, we're actually going to load an account from our MetaMask. So accounts.add, this is how we add our account from MetaMask. And we're going to do os.getemv, the private key. So this actually should be grabbing from the config. I will change that in, in the near future. We're going to deploy this Coven FUSD address, which again, right now is hard coded. These should be pulled in from the config. Once we have it deployed, we can actually read from that contract. Brownie run scripts, price feed scripts, deploy price consumer 3.py network Coven. We're going to go ahead and deploy this and Brown is going to do a whole bunch of stuff, but at the bottom, it's going to send this transaction and actually deploy this contract. So we can go ahead and check this on Coven Etherscan, pump this in here. Once it finishes confirming, we'll actually see it in here, this contract creation. So now that it's deployed, let's actually try reading from it. So we're going to do Brownie run again, the scripts, price feed scripts, read price network Coven. And this should read back the current price of Ethereum, which it does. And again, remember, solidity doesn't work right with decimals, so that's why you see the number as it is. And boom, you've just deployed your first Brownie smart contract using Python. Have fun, build some really cool stuff. Now I'm gonna show you how to work with a smart contract without using Brownie, using just web3.py. So again, pip install web3. And maybe you do wanna work with web3. Maybe there are reasons why you wanna work with web3 over Brownie, but, or maybe you wanna work with web3 and Brownie. That's probably the ideal spot. We're gonna go ahead create our Python Python file here. And you don't even need to be in, in a Browning package. You can do whatever you want, but we're going to do from web three, import web three, we do web three equals web three, web, web three dot HTTP provider. And this is where you're going to add your, your Infura total RPC URL. So if you're using just your project ID, I'm gonna head back over to Infura and get that entire string. Uh, mine is set as an environment variable. So I'm gonna do os.getenv RPC URL. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna add the ABI here. So this is gonna be the ABI of the, of the that exact same smart contract that we were using before. It's going to be a disgusting. So it's a super long, horrible monstrosity. Um, and then we're going to add the address here. So we're going to do address, address equals, uh, and I'm just going to copy paste that address. This again, we're it's going to do the exact same thing, but with web3.py. Now we're going to do contract, contract equals web3 dot s dot contract address equals address abi equals abi 
And now we're going to get make make the call. So we're going to do last uh, or excuse me latest data equals um, contract dot functions dot latest round data. Now remember, um, this is this is a function on that contract. Uh, it's a view function. We're not making a state change, which is why we're allowed to do dot call. If we were actually making a state change and we were uh, making a transaction, we were updating something on chain, we'd have to use send transaction. But because it's not, I can just use dot call. So then we're going to print latest data. Now we can just run it normally. Oops, Web3 right here. And boom. Let me just clear and make that easier. So this is the uh, the total response from that. Let's make it a little bit clearer uh, to just get the price. It actually returns a whole bunch of data. Um, but here's the latest price of Ethereum. I only see the use of Brownie and Python packages for smart contract going up. Like being serious for a second, Python is incredibly powerful. You know, there's a reason FinTech is so in love with Python and I really only see the usage going up. So if you're an Algo trader and you already know a lot of Python, this is a perfect chance to switch over to smart contracts and build some of these tools in a decentralized fashion, in an open source fashion. You're able to pool way more resources, way easier, way faster using Python and, and using Brownie. So have fun build some really cool stuff be sure to join the discord in the description below follow me on twitch i'm now streaming from time to time i do a bunch of brownie stuff i do a bunch of smart contract stuff i do a bunch of node.js stuff whatever i feel like doing at the time it's a great time to ask questions and interact and chat check me out on twitter follow me on medium all these links are in the description and if you have any questions put them in the description below and i will talk to you soon thanks bye